Hello, today we're continuing our series on GCSE physics revision and we'll be looking at electrical circuits and particularly electrical circuits in series. Series simply means that the components are put one after the other. So you might have a battery followed by another battery in the circuit, or you might have a resistor followed by another resistor in the circuit. Those are called series connections. I contrast that with parallel connections, which we'll deal with in the next video, which is where you actually split the current to go through resistors that are, as it were, in parallel with one another. So essentially part of the current will go up here, part of the current will come through here, part of the current will come through here. They'll go through their respective resistances and then they all join up again the other side and flow through the wire. This is series, this is parallel. We'll deal with parallel next time. First, let's think about voltages in series. So we're gonna put two batteries in series. Battery V1, battery V2. It's as simple as this, that the total voltage from the two batteries that are put in series is V1 plus V2. So if you've got two four volt batteries in series, then V will be four plus four, that will be eight volts. Simple as that. If you're thinking about resistors in series, R1 and R2, they are in series. The total combined resistance of these two resistances is simply R1 plus R2. You just add them together. So here's a circuit. We have two batteries in series and we have two resistances in series, R1, R2, and obviously we've got a current flowing and that current flows through both resistances. So we've got a V1 and a V2 and that's flowing through, sorry, V1, V2, flowing through R1, R2. Ohm's law says that V equals IR. We're assuming for these purposes that the resistors are not any of the ones we did in the last video that depend on temperature or light. They behave themselves. So V equals IR. What is the total of V? It's V1 plus V2. So V1 plus V2 is the total voltage. And that equals I into the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2. So the current flowing through that circuit will be V1 plus V2 divided by R1 plus R2. Let's suppose that the voltage of each battery is nine volts. Let's suppose that R1 is three ohms and R2 is six ohms. What then will the position be? The current will equal V1 plus V2, well each one is 9 volts, so that we're going to give you a total of 18 volts, divided by R1 plus R2, that's 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2 amps. So 2 amps flows through the entire circuit and flows through each of the resistors. So far, we've talked about the potential difference or the voltage across the whole circuit. You can also talk about the potential difference across a specific component, just one of the resistances. Let me show you how. Let's suppose once again that I've got two batteries in series, and we're gonna go through now three resistances. One is a five ohm resistor. The next is a seven ohm resistor, seven ohm, and the final one is a four ohm resistor. And then we complete the circuit back to the batteries. Each battery is four volts, so we've got a four volt and a four volt, and there will be a current flowing in the circuit. And what I want to know is what is the total current flowing, and what is the potential difference across each of these components. So what is the potential difference across the five ohm resistor? What is the potential difference across the seven ohm resistor? 
and what is the potential difference across the 4 ohm resistor. Well, the first thing you've got to do is to work out the current, and we do that by applying Ohm's law, V equals IR, and that means that I is equal to V over R, and V is going to be the total voltage. These are in series, so we add them together. 4 plus 4 is 8, so that's going to be equal to 8, divided by the total resistance of the circuit, and we just add them together. 5 and 7 is 12, plus 4 is 16, and that's going to be 0.5 amps. So a current of 0.5 amps is being driven by the battery through all of those three resistances. What then is the potential difference, or the voltage, just across the 5 ohm resistor? Well, once again, V equals IR. V is the potential difference. But R is now just that resistance, because we just want to know what the potential difference or the potential drop is across that resistor. And that's going to be the current, which we just calculated as 0.5, times the resistance, which is 5, and that's going to be 2.5 volts. So what we're saying is that you drop 2.5 volts as you go across that resistance. What's the potential drop across the 7 ohm resistance? Well, once again, the potential drop across the 7, this is for 5, this is for 7. The potential drop is again V equals IR, which is 0.5, because that's I, times the resistance, which is 7. And that's 3.5 volts. So, the potential drop across this resistance is 3.5 volts. Now we'll think about the 4 ohm resistor. So this is for the 4 ohm resistor, V equals IR, which is the current, 0.5 times R, which is 4, and that's 2 volts. Now watch what happens when I add all of these together. 2.5 plus 3.5 is 6, plus 2 is 8 volts. So the total 8 volts of the two batteries is wholly dropped across these resistances, but you can see that across the first resistance we go down by 2.5 volts, across the second resistance we go down by a further 3.5 volts, and across the third resistance we go down by another 2 volts. So the whole 8 volts, by the time you've got through all three resistors, you've dropped all 8 volts. One example of using resistors in series is Christmas tree lights. Christmas tree lights are essentially, or were in the old days, filament bulbs, and there used to be maybe a hundred bulbs in one complete series. And they would be connected to the mains, which we indicate like that. And let's say for ease of maths that the mains is 250 volts. And let's assume that the resistance of each bulb is 5 ohms. Well, if there are 100 bulbs in series, that means you've got 100 lots of 5 ohms, which means the total resistance is going to be 500 ohms. Each one is 5, and there are 100 of them, and they're in series. So it's 500 ohms. So what's the current that is going to flow through that circuit? Well, V equals IR. So I is equal to V over R, which is 250 volts divided by 500 ohms. And that's going to give you 0.5 amps. So half an amp will flow through all of those bulbs. What is the potential drop or the potential difference across any single bulb? Well, that will be the voltage across any single bulb will be IR where I is the current that goes through every bulb, so it's 0.5, times the resistance of one bulb, which is 5 ohms. So it's 0.5 times 5, which is 2.5 volts. So if you've got a filament lamp, a small filament lamp, that is rated as 2.5 volts and 0.5 amps, then that will be satisfactory for your Christmas tree lights. You don't have to have lights that, will, that are rated at 250 volts, which is the mains voltage, because there are a hundred of them and they are sharing that 250 volts. 
and across each one of them only 2.5 volts is being dropped. So a 2.5 volt rated bulb is fine. What's wrong with Christmas tree lights that are arranged in this way? Well, I'm afraid what's wrong with them is that if one of those lights fails, if one of the filaments burns out so that there's no longer any current, all the lights go out. And there's no way of telling without replacing each one which of the lights has blown. So Christmas tree lights in series lead to endless arguments.